state management is one of the most important and confusing topic for many and when we talk about react and its state management then there are different ways of handling it and one of the way is redux hello everyone welcome back to my channel i am nisha singla and in this session we are going to build one dummy project and we'll see how we can use redux with the help of redux toolkit package in our react app and this course will completely from scratch so anyone who knows basics of react can follow that if you are struggling with react fundamentals then you can check out my playlist on react that will definitely help you to start with today's session so this video is going to be little lengthy because in this one video we are going to talk about complete redux toolkit so please make sure that you will watch this video completely without skipping any part so that you can understand the redux toolkit in detail so let's quickly see what we are going to build in this project so we are going to build one product dashboard kind of thing uh, or you can say my shopping portal kind of screen where i will fetch a list of product from some api so i will use some dummy apis for that you can choose any api or any flow but i will recommend to follow the same so that you can understand it so this api call and displaying the data on the screen everything will be with the help of redux toolkit so when you click on the product it will launch all your products here and you will have your bag also so initially i haven't added any item from my dashboard to the my bag so it's zero as soon as i click on that you will notice my one item get added into my cart or in my bag so you can keep on adding like this and when you click on this one it will show you all your added items in the cart and after this you can also remove any item from the cart like i can click on remove so it will also remove from here and it will also update your total count here and even if you move back to product it will still be there so it will maintain your data i know in the real projects this is not the only thing that we have to build there are lots more that you can add but yes to understand redux toolkit if you are able to do this much you will be able to understand how redux toolkit is working so this is what we are going to build in this video so now let's start with the session and see how we can use redux in the react application with the help of redux toolkit package but yes before starting with the session i just want to clarify a few things because most of the people get confused between redux and redux toolkit so what exactly redux and what exactly redux toolkit i'll give you a very quick overview on that so that you can understand how these two things are working so just quickly move to your redux website and here this is the official website for redux right when you go to get started you will notice here in the installation part redux toolkit so redux toolkit is our official recommended approach for writing redux logic it means redux team itself saying that now you should use redux toolkit because this is the official recommended approach of writing the redux logic so this is not something we are introducing redux team itself enforcing the people to use redux toolkit at least for the new build that like whatever they are building the new project so now let's talk about the comparison because when you know redux or when when you are switching to redux toolkit you must know why we are moving to redux toolkit there must be some valid reason that's why team is enforcing you to move to redux toolkit so for that let me show you a few points that you can make a note that will definitely help you during the implementation so now let's understand what is the difference between old redux and the new redux okay and the redux toolkit so when we talk about old redux so in that case it was not much organized lots of repetition was there and lots of code was repeating multiple time and manual configuration was required for so many things but on the other hand when we talk about redux toolkit they have improvised everything over there so when we talk about redux toolkit it is much more organized and much more fit you can say because the code in the redux toolkit is much more cleaner and most of the things are automatically configured for you so don't you don't need to write so many things to get a basic redux application lots of things are already configured for you so that's why redux team is saying to use redux toolkit because they will definitely help you to improve your code the way you are writing the redux logic now it's much simpler and cleaner uh, let's talk about few differences the official website of redux is reduxjs.org but when we talk about redux toolkit it's a complete new website reduxtoolkitjs.org now when we talk about redux right uh, debugging of redux is very important because it's, it's a bit quite complex when we talk about a complete redux architecture so in that case there is a one extension uh, that is a browser extension called redux dev tool when we talk about old redux over there you have to configure it manually but with the help of redux toolkit it is automatically 
integrated with you, you don't need to write anything for that. In all Redux, we have to write immutable state and manually we have to write the immutable state. Immutable state means always you have to return a new state. So in that case, the person who is writing the code, they must understand how to write the immutable state update, right? But when we talk about Redux toolkit, they have removed this one. They said you can write your code in a mutable manner and internally Redux toolkit will use one package that is called immer.js that will automatically change your code to immutable. Configuring a store is definitely is complicated over there because in the store you have to configure lots of things manually. But on the other hand, as I told you, like mostly things are auto configured for you. So the configuration of your store is also very clean and very smaller. Now, yes, this is very important part. When we talk about old Redux, right, you have to create your reducer separately with the help of switch and then you have to match your actions, right? And you have to create your creators or actions separately. So lots of repetition was there in the code. But on the other hand, just one method, you have to use create slice method and automatically the reducer and creators will get created within the same function. So it's much more cleaner and smaller. As we know that Redux is basically to handle synchronous, but if you want to handle something asynchronous, then you have to use Ethan's middleware. So in that case also, in the old Redux, you have to in integrate your Redux or Thumb middleware manually. In the Redux toolkit, it is already integrated for you. And handling asynchronous code with old Redux was also very, you know, you have to write lots of code over there because you have to handle the error codes, you have to do try catch and lots of things you have to do over there. But Redux toolkit give you one method that is called create async thunk that makes your life a little easier. And the other reason is, we all are moving from class based to functionals, right? And all packages like React Router and lots of other packages have now moved to class to functional component. In a similar manner, Redux also moved from class components to functional components. So in Redux, all Redux, the implementation was on class based implementation was there. But in the Redux toolkit, they have moved to the functional components and with TypeScript, they have introduced hooks that will definitely make your life much easier. So keeping all these differences, I think you get an idea that it's just uh, they have improvised the code in terms of lots of code we have to write in Redux, but that is not in the Redux toolkit. You will see that in the practical that Redux toolkit is much cleaner. You don't need to write so many things at multiple places and that too repeating code. No, it's much cleaner. So that on a high level, what is the difference between all Redux and new Redux toolkit so that you can relate the differences and then we can directly jump to the Redux toolkit. If you are new to Redux toolkit and you never worked on Redux, then just forget about it. But it's always give you a clear understanding why we are learning something new. So now just give a pause for a second and go through with all these points in your mind and just recall what we have discussed so far so that you can understand what we are going to do now. So for today's session, I have created a React project with the help of Create React app and that's how it will look, right? By default, it comes like this. So here we have this app.js file and which has a basic component. So now let's see how we can build our own product dashboard with the help of Redux toolkit. So first, I will create a basic layout that is required for our project and then we'll see how Redux toolkit can be used. So the first thing that we need is my product component where I will load all the product detail. So what I'll do quickly, I'll create one components folder and as of now, I'll create one product.js file and here I can quickly create a product component. And now we need to call it from our app component because this is my root component. As of now, it's coming by default with this, right? So we can get it from this JSS and instead I can load my product component. So let's check it on the browser. You can see we are getting this heading that is coming from my product component. Now let's move to this product dashboard and now we want to get the data from some API that can give me some product detail. There are so many fake REST API that you can, you can use for this demo. And if you have any local API ready with you, that also you can use. But again, I would recommend to follow exactly with me so that you can understand the flow. So uh, we have so many fake API, product fake REST API. And here we have this fake store API, product uh, dummy JSON is there, right? Lots of API. Let's uh, explore this one. Here you can see it will give you so many resources. I want to use this product route 
and here you can see we have list of products so I need to consume this URL so as of now I'm not implementing it through Redux toolkit let's have it with the help of react only and then we will convert this code to Redux toolkit so how usually we make a API call in react component that we do with the help of use effect hook because I want the data on load of my product dashboard right so for that I will be needing a state to hold the data and to make the API call I need use effect hook so these two hooks you need to import and let's first call API so use effect hook takes this callback function and I just need to call this only once during my initial rendering or mounting right here you can call the API now to hit API you can use exhaust package as well I will use fetch method only and I'll pass this endpoint that will return data that I need to pass to JSON and then whatever result I'll get that I need to set to my state because I need a state that can hold this result so that I can use it in the JSX so for that I will use my use state hook and it will have products and get products method initially I don't have anything so my product will be empty that's why I'm passing empty array so now once I get the data I need to update my products with this data so for that I have this get products method that will help me to update the state so here you just simply need to do get products and give this products to this sorry this result right so now your product should have this data that you will get from this endpoint if you want to quickly confirm this one you can do something like this you can do console.log or you can also check it like this I will do products here so if you see here you can see I'm getting the data it is same this one so this step is done now instead of displaying it like this I have to display it in on UI right usually when you see any product dashboard any online portals or any shopping portals you will see list of products how they display so you can refer any online application and from there you can get an idea like if I show you quickly like Mintra and there you can see how they are displaying the products so if you see here you can see it will also display the list of product like this because it will show you the images and basic detail of how to product and lots of other things I we are not going to build the exact layout right but similar kind of thing so this card we need so that I can display my product detail like this so to have the same look and feel you can write your own custom CSS or you can use any built-in library as this session is more on Redux toolkit so I will not be focusing on CSS part it's totally up to you how you want to design your components but just to keep it simple I will use react bootstrap that will give me built-in components to for my designing so I don't need to write it from scratch so if you go to react bootstrap there you will find cards and see if, if you open this website I need some this kind of card only right where I will have some image and then product detail product name and maybe a button at the bottom uh, so that I can display add to cart right something like that so for this this uh, JSX is already given so I will be using the same but for that I need react bootstrap first of all okay and to have some basic CSS classes I need to have bootstrap as well so let's install these two libraries and here I can say npm install react bootstrap and bootstrap so it will install react bootstrap package and bootstrap library for you and uh, we just need to import and we just need to use it so these in packages are installed right let's confirm it in the package of json you should get it here we have bootstrap and we have react bootstrap okay now in the app.js file let's quickly import the bootstrap uh, for basic css classes that might we will use right so we can import this one and in the product.js file but I want this cart for every product we have to iterate through each items right and then we have to design the UI so for that we can use map method and we can create the cart right so what we can do here let's create one variable cart that I am going to render at the end and here I will iterate on my product state because products will hold the complete data right that will return individual product here and here 
I'm going to design my card. So here I'll create one div and uh, you can use flex model also, but I'm just using this column medium three. And within this, let's paste my card that I have copied. So now this cards we have to display instead of this product, right? So we can have it something like this. Let's create one row first of all here. And within this, I'm going to have my cards. So here, let's use this cards. So once you save the changes, okay. So here the card is not defined because card is a React Bootstrap component. So we have to import it from React Bootstrap. And I'm also using button here. So that also we have to import. Save the changes and let's see how it is displaying. Perfect. Right, so it's displaying four column because this is a 12 column layout, right? So it will display four column in one row. So we got the layout basic card like this. Let's have the data now because it's just I have used the hard coded data. So let's replace with what we want to display it. So as of now, I want to display the image. So for image, instead of this one, let's use my product dot image. You can check from this one. So we have this image, right? Okay, so image is coming like this. Although these all are of different size, uh, but that's fine. We can fix that in a moment. Let's have a style here. Okay, it's fine, right? But let's, we can have it uh, in a center. So what we can do, we can wrap it something like this. So it will move my images in the center. For title, we have this title property, right? So here instead of card title, I can say product dot title. And it will display the title like this. And next we have, maybe I want to display price or description that you decide what you want to display. Here you can display that one. So I can say here product dot description. Fine. Or you can simply say product dot price for now. And at the bottom we need a button. Button is already there but we just want to have add to cart instead of this one add to cart. You can have a key also here so that we can optimize the virtual DOM and let's have some height to this one fine so let's have a margin also here so I think it looks fine for now and this button also looks you know not positioned properly so what we can do for this we can wrap this button in the footer so that footer will always be at the bottom right so let's see if it get a line so it will come outside body we have one more tag here that is card dot footer and let's have your button here fine fine so it's now more aligned just like that it's background color looks little weird so what we can do we can have its background color also change just to keep it sync. I have it as a white. Fine. So I think we are good for now with this. We just display a very basic detail about the product. So this layout we have created just with the help of React only and with the help of use state and use effect hook. And we just use a simple React Bootstrap to have this card layout. Okay, of course, you can design it in a much beautiful way, but I will not be focusing on CSS. That's why I'm not worrying about much about the CSS part for now. Now, the next step is let's have a basic routing so that we can display the product dashboard and so user can also switch to the cart page where they can see all the add to cart products, right? So very basic routing. I want to have it for that. We need routing package, right? That can help me to implement the routing. So that is my react router DOM. So React Router DOM package is also upgraded now. So there are little changes in that package, how we use routes. 
So let's implement that. I'm just installing React Router DOM package that will give me the classes or methods that are used to implement the routing. Okay. So this is installed. So now in the app.js file, let's have a basic routing. Fine. So how we are going to do that? First, to implement routing, we have some classes that you have to import. Now in the new version of React Router DOM, we have create browser router class and we have create routes from elements and we have router provider. After this, what we have to do, we just need to create a simple routes. For that, how we are going to, we are going to create one variable router here and with the help of this create browser router function, we are going to create our routes and for that we have this create routes from elements function that will basically gives you option to create the routes. Okay, you can see here, it will here you are going to mention all your routes and creating a route is very simple. You just need to use routes. Earlier we use routes here to create any sub childs, right? But here you just need to use routes and that's it. And further in this, you can have your route. So as of now, I'll create only two route. The one route is the index route that will basically uh, show my dashboard or my product detail, right? And the other one I'm going to create is my cart page. So for that, let's create first two component. I have one dashboard.js and I will have one cart.js. As of now, it will not do anything. I'll keep it very simple because first let's focus only on routing and then we'll implement some functionality inside this. As of now, let's have a very basic heading so that we can differentiate that the correct component is loading or not, right? So here we can say export default dashboard and the, I'll just copy this one and paste it here. Just replace cart here. Now move to your app.js and I just want to have two route for my dashboard and for my cart. So what I can do here, I can say this is my index route that will render my dashboard component because it will be my default route. So we have to import this one. And let's import cart as well. And I will add one more route that will have a path of cart and it will launch the cart component. This syntax is same, right? Now here, of course, we have to have other components also need to be rendered like my navigation, my other components, right? So that how you will render because now in this you are going to do something like this. Let's remove the product for now and to render my routing you have to say this router provider and that will have a router property and you will initialize your routing like this. Now everything that you will put it should be inside this routing even my Redux toolkit provider will also should be inside my routing only. But how I will wrap it inside because if I put some my logic here, maybe I will create my navigation here. So it will not be inside the routing, right? Router should be root component for all the other components in this case so that my other things can work. So for this, in the new version of this React Router DOM, we basically use this root route here. What you will do, you will add a path here that will be basically my root path. So here you just need to render one component that basically your layout component where you are going to do all these stuffs. Fine. So what I'll do, I'll create one component here only or you can keep it in a separate file and give it a name of maybe uh, root layout dot js. Let's create this one. So from here, from a root route, you just need to call your root layout component it will auto import here you just need to call this one now one thing is we have to import this route also right so let's import this one save the changes and let's check how it will look
okay so it's just displaying navigation the reason being is when my app component will load my routing will render here right and as this is my root element this will call my root layout which is here and it has only navigation i didn't tell where exactly i need to render my uh, respective components right so whatever component i am expecting to render as an index route it ideally should call my dashboard component so ideally as soon as my this uh, page will load dashboard component should render and when i change my route to cart cart component should render but it is not rendering the reason being is in the root layout component you have to tell in the layout maybe you are creating sidebar header footer so you need to tell where exactly you want to render your routes so for that now we need to mention that with the help of one component that is called outlet component so you just need to import outlet component from react router dom and here maybe in this layout i want to call my outlet component so whenever your route will change what whatever component you have mentioned against that route that route is going to render in this area so let's check this so here you can see uh, this is my default route so dashboard component is rendering and when i say cart it will render my cart component perfect but now i need this navigation need to be done through some links so that i can navigate easily right so let's have some nav bar so for nav bar also in the react bootstrap if you notice we have this nav bar and here you can see we have this complete nav bar and the same nav bar we are going to use so you can decide uh, which kind of layout you need and you can use this one i need something like this because i need to have some button here and here i just need to have some brand and then i want to have one link right so i want to use this one but it has so many details uh, either you can write on your own or you can copy from here it's totally up to you but i need one more component here let's first create that one and that is my nav bar so i'll say nav bar panel dot js and here i can create a component and let's first position it i want to position it here in the instead of navigation i want to have my nav bar okay so if you check here it will show me navigation and here so instead of navigation i want to build my navigation now so let's use this nav bar i will be needing these imports let's have it and we'll remove whatever we don't need it and this nav bar i need fine copy this one and paste it here okay this is extra we can get it off save the changes and just check it here so here you can see we are getting the exact nav bar right now let's improvise it and have only those links or those data which is required for us okay i just need this brand and one link and here instead of this search i may want to have a cart option to uh, display the data in the cart okay other than that i don't need any link for now so what you can do for that let's first change this brand here so instead of this one we can say redux toolkit just the project name okay and we can have one link for the product instead of home we can say products we can get rid of this one we don't need it link right we didn't we don't need this drop downs no we don't need it then we have nav link see the changes and see we have product and we don't need this link also so we can get rid of this one we don't need even this form right we don't need it see but product route is not working right so let's fix that one if you want to make it work we don't need to have it uh, as a href here what we can do we can have our two path and my path is this as a default route it's not working because here you just need to use link route that come from the react router and now to make this link work you just need to say as and just mention this link so when you click on this one you can see it's working there are so many import we can get rid of it 
we don't need these right we don't need a button we don't need form and even we don't need this drop down right but yes i need to have one option to move to my cart also so for that what you can do after this one we can have a navbar dot toggle and here we can have a navbar dot collapse and we don't need this one right we don't need it after this brand we just simply need to have this one okay so let's complete this one we are inside this right and let's have one lab bar dot text and inside this we can have a link again like this and instead of this i can have a cart here or we can say my bag initially let's have its value as zero and if you see this one it is here right i just want to move it to uh, maybe right side so what we can do for that we can have it something like this justify content and and here we go so when you click on this idly should go to the cart but uh, same thing the way we have given this one here also you have to give the link that is already there but instead of this route you have to say cart route let's test this one so when you click on this one you will move to the cart when you click on this one it will come to the dashboard so now my basic routing is done so let's call product component that we have built from this dashboard component so that i can see my products right so let's import product component and instead of this one let's have product component rendered like this save the changes and when you see this one so here you can see it will launch all my products and when i click on this one it will show my cart page when you go to the small screen and let's do this it is also collapsible perfect so now we are done with the basic things like the initial setup the layout part the routing part everything is done now we are going to discuss about the redux toolkit part how we can implement redux toolkit to make it further more organized and to share our state globally so now let's see how we can use redux toolkit here to maintain our state as of now the state here means this product detail right so we are fetching all the product in the product dashboard so we have the data there now when i click on add to cart right i want to display all the items that i have added to my cart i can i should be able to display it here and how many items i have added in the cart i want to update the total count here also so if you notice all these things are at different places this is in the product component the displaying this my total cart here that is in the nav bar right and displaying the items in my cart it is in the cart component so in this case i have to use the same data at different places so in this case there are different ways of achieving it either you can you can manually passing down the state to all the components so there are the prop drilling you have to use ideally again it is not very complex project but when you talk about a actual e-commerce website right there would be so many components and passing down the state to every component with the help of prop drilling ideally is not a good practice so other ways you can use context apis and you can use use reduce or who to do that but that also become very complex because my state are frequently updating here because i have to add the element to the card i have to delete the element from the card so it's so many update that will also not be that much efficient so in this scenario redux is a better option because i can maintain my state at one place and then that one place is store right so from store i can pass down the state to all the component wherever it is needed so it is more organized and lots of things you will get here so let's see how redux toolkit we can use i have already explained you about redux and redux toolkit so you don't need to confuse with this right so redux is basically a way through which you maintain global state in the react components so to maintain global state 
you can write your logic in Redux. So to write the Redux logic instead of Redux package, now we are using Redux toolkit package. Okay, it's very similar like we are moving from class based components to functional components in a similar manner. We are moving from Redux to Redux toolkit and it is giving lots of benefits that we have already discussed. So to use this Redux toolkit package, we need two things. We need Redux toolkit. Earlier we used Redux here, but now we will use Redux toolkit and then to bind my Redux logic with my React, I have to do React bindings that we do with the help of React Redux. So it remains same. Now here also we will in, we have introduced lots of uh, hooks that will help you to do that binding, right? We'll see all those things in detail now. So the first step is you have to install these two packages. So let's do that first. I will say npm install Redux toolkit. So Redux toolkit is installed and in the same way I can also use React Redux for my React binding. So these two packages we need to install. So it's also done. Yes, this one. Okay. So here the concepts that will remain same. You will have one store and that store will hold your reducer where you will have all the state update and everything is going to be done at one place. Then this state is going to be rendered on your UI and from UI you have to dispatch a action, a event. So that action will basically help you to update your state in the store or in the Redux. So in this flow you can see the data will flow from your store to your UI components and to pass anything to your store you have to dispatch a action. So the first thing we have to do now we have to create a store and we have to create a reducer so that those state we can pass to my UI, right? And to dispatch action, we need action creators. So now in Redux toolkit, these things are simplified. We still, we have to create store. And now instead of just creating a reducer, we will create a slice. So when you create a slice, it will create a reducer and the respective action creator for you. Okay, so it's much more simplified now. So let's do that. I will create one folder with the name of store and I'm going to create a slice first of all. So here in this case, I will be having two slices. The one slice where I will get the data for my API and the other, another slice is where I will hold the data in my cart or I will add, delete like that. So let's first create a slice that basically for my cart, what I need that when I go to products, right, when I click on add to cart, so all those items on which I say add to cart, all those items I need to store in my cart slice. So for that, let's create one slice and give it a name of cart slice.js. So let's see how to create a slice. So to create a slice, we have one create slice method from Redux toolkit. Now I'll create one cart slice here with the help of this create slice that will take one object and in this object you have to pass all these things. Your reducer you are going to create here. Okay. So I'll give it a name of name. So it will have one name. You can give it a cart here and my initial state. So initial state I have to define. I don't have anything in my cart right initially so it would be an empty array. So here also you can create like this it's totally up to you. Now after this to create a reducer you have one reducers property here that will again take a object and here now you have to create your action creator like what all things you want to do in this reducer I want to add my elements to my cart or maybe I want to delete the items from my cart. So first let's add one action and I'll say add. So it will, it will act like a normal method which will take state and your action. And here you have to do your state update. So whenever I pass some data from my UI, I will read from this one action.payload and that payload will give me the data that I want to update to my state. So as I told you now the state uh, you don't need to update with the immutable manner like the way we did in Redux. 
here you can update the state in a mutable manner you can mutate the state directly because behind the scene ema.js library is used in the redux toolkit that will make sure that your state will update as a immutable manner behind the scene so you don't want, you don't need to worry so i can simply say state dot push and whatever data i get i can simply say like this so whatever data i will uh, i will get i will update and i will add it to my state so it's a very simple reducer i have created now from here you have to export your reducer so i will say export default your card slice dot reducer is automatically give you one reducer property which basically return the reducer and the other thing is we have to return my actions because this these actions we are we have to dispatch from ui right because i have to tell whether you want to perform add operation delete operation or edit operation what so that that will act like my action creator so that is the beauty of redux toolkit you don't need to write too much of boilerplate code within this slice you can do your reducers you can write your action creators and it's in a very simplified way in future maybe we will be having a delete option also like this so you can keep on adding your uh, actions creator here like this and now let's export this function also so that we can call it from my component so here you have to say export const and here all your actions creators will be getting export like this from card slice dot actions so my slice will basically return two things actions these will be my functions here and reducer that will give me the state so this is how we are going to create a slice and when we when we have to do the same thing in redux there we have to create so many folders and file for redux because there we have to create actions reducers types in a separate logic and that is the reason lot of boilerplate code was there but with redux toolkit we just need all in one and that is with the help of slice so slice is a collection of redux reducer logic and actions for a single feature so when you want to create a slice with the help of create slice method you just need to mention your name of the slice your initial state and reducer and your actions so in the redux toolkit create slice function will auto generate the action type and action creator for you based on the name of the reducer function you provide and the another thing is in redux we have to learn how to update the state in a immutable manner right but this is not the case with redux toolkit you just need to write the way we, we usually write but it looks like we are mutating the state directly but this is not the case behind the scene emer library is there which detect the changes to a draft state and produce a brand new immutable state based of those changes so you don't need to worry about writing the state in a immutable manner emer js will do behind the scene for you so writing the redux logic and creating the actions and action creators are very clean and simplified in redux toolkit now the next step is we have created our state here now we have to create a store so store will actually bring your actions and reducer together and hold the application state so to create a store we just need to use configure store method of redux toolkit so for that you just need to create one store in the store folder and here we have to create the store so to create a store we need one function that is called configure store that will come from redux toolkit and we just need to write configure store it will return one object and this object will have one property of reducer and here you need to mention your slice that you have created so far i have only one feature that is my cart so i have only one slice that is my cart slice so here you just need to mention your reducer so i will create one property of cart that will hold my cart slice and at the end just make sure that you have export your store that's it so this way you will be able to create a store so redux toolkit has introduced this configure store which basically do lots of configuration for you you don't need to do it manually like uh, enabling the redux dev tool extension redux dev tool extension is very powerful for redux debugging right we will talk about this extension in a moment but in redux we have to configure it manually but here you just you don't need to do that any configuration in the redux for that you just need to install the extension and you are good to go second thing is thunk middleware is by default there for you in the configure store you don't need to configure the thunk middleware manually 
these configurations are already there when you use configure store in your project. Now we are done with Redux logic. The next step is we have created our store. So now we have created our Redux and we have created our components, but these are not communicating with each other. So ideally now we what we want, we want to provide our state that we have created in the Redux to my component pages or I want to update the state from my component to Redux with the help of some dispatching action. So all these things will possible once my component know about the store. So the next step is configuring the store to your root component. So now React Redux binding will come into the picture. So far we have used only the Redux toolkit package because we were configuring our Redux. Now if you remember in the beginning we have installed two packages Redux toolkit and React Redux. And I mentioned that React Redux package is used for the React. We need that binding right. So for that we have one provider that provider component will come from my React Redux package. So this provider is basically a higher order component that wrap up the React application and makes it aware to the entire Redux state. And it provides the store to its all the child components. So now we want our React entire app to access the store. So just put that provider wherever you want to flow the state. So now we want our entire React app to access the store. So just put the provider in the root component. So if you go to app.js file, here you can see we have routing. So here I cannot do provider because provider also should come within my routing. So for that I told you, you have to do everything here in this root layout. So move to this root layout. And now these are my component where I want to use my store. So just wrap these component within the provider. So first let's import the provider. And this will come from my React Redux. And of course, I have to provide a store, so I need store as well. So make sure that you have import the store. And you just need to say provider. And just wrap your all components within this provider. So this provider have one prop of store which will point to my store. This is this one. Okay. So this is the way through which you provide your Redux state to your components. So now as we have done that integration, so now my React components know about the Redux state and that we can check with the help of Redux DevTool extension. So for that, move to your browser and go back and just check, go to the developer tool. And here just make sure that you have that. I don't see Redux step tool extension because I don't have this extension as of now. So let's install that. Go to more tool extensions and here open Chrome Web Store. So here I will search for Redux dev tools and from here you just need to add this one. So let's close this developer tool once and open it again and you can see although it is showing me here so it's added right let's check it from here you will get a redux option let's open this one so here once you go and check in the state you will notice like we have cart state here that is empty so this cart is something in the store if you go to the store and if you see here this cart so it is displaying me this this state here and as this is pointing to cart slice, if you notice here, I have initial state as empty. So that's why initially it is empty. So now all the actions that you are going to dispatch, it, either it is add action or delete action, all those tracking you can do from here. So this extension is very powerful. If you want to debug your Redux state, you want to know when it was changed, what was the value, how and for which action this state was changed. So debugging is very, very easy when you use this Redux DevTool extension. We will use this extension throughout. So let's keep it open. And now let's move to the next point. And that is, I want to add my products because I, when I click on this add to cart, my this cart state should hold that product detail. Fine. So ideally what we need to do, if you go to this cart slice, this add method is already there, right? I have already created an action. This function we have to call from my react component and I have to bind it to my add to cart button so that whatever product I will add 
it should add to my state. But the point is how to dispatch a action from my component. See now there are two things that you have to remember. With Redux state ideally we are going to do two things. Either we will read the state from my Redux into my React component or I may want to update my Redux state based on some action that I am going to take from my component. Like suppose I want to read how many items I have added in my bag. It means I am reading the state from my Redux. Now, from component, I am clicking on a add to cart and this product I want to add to my Redux state. So this is a dispatching action. So for these two things, in the Redux dev tool, it is very clean now. Earlier, it was really a headache to dispatch an action to Redux because we have to mention the type, we have to manually pass the action for the payload. But now it is much cleaner with the help of hook. So React Redux will give you two hook, use dispatch hook and use selector hook. Use dispatch hook is will use to dispatch a action and use selector hook is going to use to read the state. So first we have to dispatch a action so that I can add that particular item to my cart. So let's use use dispatch hook to do so. So add to cart button we have in the product component, right? So let's move to that component and here you can see we have add to cart. Now we just need to have a on click event here and this will call one function add to car and whatever product we are currently looping in that I have here right this product I want to add to my cart. So this is just a some simple function so this, this we have to create here that will give me product detail and from here we have to dispatch a action and which action add action. So it means I need two things. I need a dispatch function first of all because in Redux we cannot directly call a action of my Redux. For that we have to dispatch a action. So to do so we have use dispatch hook from React Redux. And we have to make sure that we have imported our add action also because that this method we are going to call now that will come from my slice. So it is in the store cart slice. So this use dispatch hook is going to return our dispatch method. So we just need to get it from here like this. So now with the help of this dispatch method you need to tell which method you want to dispatch. I want to dispatch a add function and this payload. If you see it will show me the Redux logic. So in the Redux we usually do something like this. Whenever you dispatch any action you have to write payload, you have to write type to match in the switch cases of your Redux and basis of that it is going to update the state. But now this is not the case. It is very clean. You just need to mention your action and pass your payload. My payload is this current product and that is it. This is how you have to dispatch the action. Save the changes and let us test this one. Initially my cart is empty because nothing is there and I haven't dispatched anything that's why there is no action as well. So suppose I am clicking on this add to cart just make sure you will notice one item will get added here and it will also show you uh, this item will add basis on which action. So I click on this add to cart you will see one action has dispatched for my cart slice and in the cart slice add method was called. See how helpful it is right. And if you see my state also, it is also updated with one item here and that is my this item. See. If you click on any other item, another action will dispatch and another item will get added. So Redux DevTool extension will give you a clear picture about when the state was changed and which action was dispatched for that state, everything. Even if you see here, as of now we have two, right? You can go back and see how the state was changed from 0 to 1 to 2 and you can see when which action was dispatched. So it's very helpful to track. If something is not working, you can replay the state to up to which it was working, when it was not working. Very helpful tool. So now we learn how to dispatch a action. Now let's come to the next point, how to read the state from Redux because my state, my Redux has um, two items in the state, right, in the cart. I want to get these detail now in my cart page. But first let us see how to update this bag because idly I have two items in the cart so it should show two instead of zero. So it is same we have to read the state from my Redux 
and then we can get the number of items. So my bag is in the nav bar panel component right here we have and so instead of this zero hard coded value I want to get the actual number of count. So for that we just need to read the state from my Redux get the cart state and then I have to count how many items are there in the cart. So for that also we have to use a hook that is called use selector hook. Use selector hook is basically used to get the state from my Redux. So let's do that. For that you have to say use selector hook. It is also for binding so it will come from react redux package and this is going to return state. So maybe here I can say cart products and here you have to use use selector hook that will return me a state because I can have multiple slices. So from which slice I need to have that from my cart slice. And please make sure that whatever you have mentioned here because in future I can have another slice also here. So you need to mention from which slice you want to get this state. I want to get this state for this slice that is referring by this object here, this key here, right? So you just need to mention the correct key name. So now move back to your component. So cart product will return all the products that I have currently in my cart slice. So let's get the length out of it with the help of length property. Save the changes and back to your browser. You can see it automatically updated because I have two items in my cart. If you add one more item, you can see it will update. So now we have learned how to dispatch a action and how to read the state. And if you understood these two things, that's how your complete Redux is going to work. Because most of the time, we either we have to read the state or we have to dispatch the action. Another point we have to do is when I click on that my bag, I want to display these four items here. Okay, so for that simple logic, the logic will remain same in the card component. I need to get the state and then we have to use like in the nav bar, I get the length from my card. But in, in the cart component, I will display that product. So logic will remain same. You just need to go to cart. Here also you have to use the same pattern. You have to use use selector hook because that will give me the state from React Redux and just read the state from it. And here I can say use selector that will return me state from my cart. Just make sure you got the correct data. You can have it quickly like this just to make sure. See, so it will display all the four items. And now we just need to use simple JSX and want to display it. I will not write again a very fancy code for that. I will reuse my code that I have in the product component. So if you want to use as it is, you can keep this one also in a separate component, then you can use it. I might modify it little bit. So I'll copy it from here for now and I will paste it here as it is. And let's change your state also with products. And let's display it. So I will display my cards here. Instead of three column, let's have 12. I may want one, only one item in one row. Let's first check. Okay, so it's saying card is not defined. Of course, we haven't imported this uh, component from React Bootstrap. So make sure that you have imported it. So I am using card from React Bootstrap. And I am using button also. Although we are not using add to cart, but I will use button. So first let me import this and later we'll see for which action I'm gonna use it. So we have react bootstrap and button. As of now, we don't have this add to cart also. So let's remove this one. Save the changes and let's check this one. Okay, just spelling is also not correct here. So let's save and check this one. So let me add maybe two, three items. So I have three items in the card. When I click on this one, 
it will show me like this. Now instead of add to cart of course we have to have maybe remove item. Okay and instead of blue let us have something in red. So now let us add a logic to remove the item. It will also same idly I have to dispatch a action when I click on this button that action will I have to create in my slice. As of now I have only one method in the slice that is my add. So let us move to the card slice. And here let us add one more action that is for remove. So you just need to keep on adding your action here. So now from here I need to return a state that will not hold that deleted item okay. So I will use filter method because I need to filter the item based on my id. So here I will say whatever id I have if it is not equal to what I will pass from my ui then return that array only. So this way I am going to delete the item from my cart. So now the next step make sure that you have export this method also from here so that we can call this from my remove to cart button. So let us move to the cart and from here I have to remove the item. So for that let us add a event on click and I will create one method remove to cart and I need to pass the id. So id I already have for this one. So this is a unique ID for every product. So this ID I am going to use to remove the item from the cart. Now this function we have to create here. So let us have it remove to cart that will give me the ID and from here we have to dispatch a remove action. So what we need to do for that we have to use use dispatch hook as we have discussed right and I need to import my remove action from my slice. So let us import that one as well. And, and now you need to get that dispatch method from this use dispatch hook. So just you have to call dispatch and your remove function and pass this id and you are good to go. Let us check this one. So let me add few items. So three items are there in my cart. And you can see that as of now I have only added the item that is why only add actions are there. Let me remove one item. So you will see now for remove our remove action was dispatch. And if you check your current state it has only two item because one item I have removed and the same state has been updated here also. So now we are also able to remove the items from the cart. So that is how you can add the items you can remove the item and you can perform lots of other operation in a similar manner. So now we are left with only one part and that is our product dashboard because this data fetching we are doing in the component in the product component ideally this API call will also we, we have to do from my Redux. So let us see how we can do that. If you open your product component there if you notice we have call API here in the use effect hook. So let us see how we can make API call with the help of Redux toolkit. When we talk about Redux, Redux is basically used to handle the synchronous behavior. The Redux do not know how to deal with the asynchronous logic. But if you want to handle any asynchronous operation in Redux, there we use middleware. And Redux Thunk is one of the most popular middleware that is used to perform asynchronous operation. And a middleware is designed to enable the developer to write logic that has side effect which refer to any external interaction outside an existing client application like uh, fetching the data from the backend. So with Redux toolkit Redux thunk is included by default okay you do not need to include anything manually it is already there for you. So let us see how to make a API call with the help of middleware. Now first we need to understand can we use the same slice here for that this one. Can I have one more action creator here and I can add my API call ideally not right as I told you you create slice per feature. So if you create a method here for fetching the data it will mutate the state right. So in that case you will not hold your original data that you have from the API. So for API call we have to create a separate slice and we have to handle it separately. So let us create one slice for that product slice dot js and I will copy the same code here for now and just change the name here 
product slice and here I can say products. Let's remove these methods as of now and let's import this one. Now the next point is the initial state. Now the initial state would not be empty. We are making an API call. So API call basically always not written data. It also written errors or other status, right? So to handle all the expect of API, let's make it an object and hold the result in data that is empty as of now. Okay, so this is my initial state for my uh, product slice. We have to make the API call. So to do the API call, you will not write the logic here. Okay, because slice don't know how to handle the asynchronous operation. So we have to create a, a thunk action creator here. So what we'll do, we will create one function here, give it a name, maybe get products, and it is going to return a promise, right? So here we can say get products thunk. So I'm creating one thunk creator you can say here that will have dispatch and your state. And now whatever API call you were doing in the product component, let's get it from here. I'll copy it as of now. And you need to put this code here. Okay. So here we can say await and let's hold the result into data. And let's put it in a variable. And in at the end, we got this data, right? So this data we have to pass to my action data that I will create in the reducer, right? So suppose I have one method here that is fetch products this is same right that we did earlier for state and remove in the cart so here my this thunk creator will dispatch a action for this function so from here i will simply say dispatch and fetch products and pass this result so far what we have done we have export this function from here then we dispatch a action from my component for this one right but now instead of calling this one from the component my thunk action creator will call this one and from ui i'm going to call this function so let's update the state now in the state i have data right so i will update my data with the data that i'll get from my api that is action dot payload so this is done now to make it work i have to configure it with the store so move to the store the way we have cart slice, similarly, you have to import your product slice. So here, what we can do, we can say fetch. What is the name? Uh, let me check again. Product slice, right? So here we can say product slice. This one. So here we can say products and here we can say product slice save the changes as of now nothing should break because my components still have api call but here if i refresh it one time if you see here now i have two slices: the cart and the product and if you expand it initially i have only data that is empty right because i haven't configured i haven't called my uh, thunk creator from my component so it is empty as of now so let's do the next step i hope so far it is clear we have created a separate slice now for the product and we have created a thunk creator and that is just returning me the data from the api and this data i am passing to my reducer creator so now for my component instead of calling this function i will be calling this thunk creator that is get products so for that move to your product.js file from where we were calling the api now instead of doing this i will get it from this code now what we have to do we have to dispatch a action for fetch products so now i just need a dispatch method and i need the thunk creator that i have exported from here get product so let's first import this one so here I can say import 
and next we need to import use dispatch so use dispatch is already there so we can directly use that right because we have already used for add to cart so it is already there so now here I'm gonna dispatch a action and that is get products so we have dispatched the action and now the product that my API will fetch I need to read that product as well right so now we don't need this state because my products will come from my product slice so we can remove this one and now I need products right which I am using here so this product will come from my product state and if you go to the browser you will notice it is saying that product is not defined because we don't have this product anywhere in the code so as I told you to read the state we have to use use selector hook right so the same thing we have to do use selector hook and this is going to give us a data because it will return a complete object remember I had the state as an initial state here in the product slice as an object and I need data out of it right so what we need to do now we just need to get the data with the help of use selector hook and here it will return the state as my store has two reducer or two slice right so I need to get the data for this product state so here you need to mention state dot products so now this data will hold the product list but here I am using products so you can use alias and you can change it to products here save the changes and let's test whether it will work okay so we are getting an error like read property of undefined so okay so here if you see I have used get products right but get product is a default import I have done ID it is a named import so we have to do something like this save the changes and let's test once more fine so it's working so now we, we are still getting the data right but let's check whether my state in the redux is updated or not so we have one product state right and if you notice here it triggered the fetch products action right and this fetch products is is this one so with the help of my thunk I have executed my this action which will uh, update my state with the products and if you check my products it will return me a data which has list of data here that I'm able to display and rest again my card slice anyways is working right you can see so there is no impact on that and here you can say it, it dispatch products and here it dispatch now cart action so both slice are working fine now this thunk action creator I have told you as a generic the very same way we did in the redux as well but now in the redux toolkit we have more better way of handling it because when we talk about API right API not only return the data it also return the state of your API so if you have worked with promises you know like promise has three states like fulfilled pending and rejected right so now to handle the same kind of structure of promises or to handle this different state Redux toolkit offer a better way of handling asynchronous operation with the help of create async thunk. So now let's improvise this code with the help of create async thunk. There will be no change in the component but we have to modify the slice. So now in Redux toolkit we have reducers to handle the synchronous task. If we have something asynchronous then we have one more option here that is called extra reducers okay so this extra reducer has uh, builder and it will be a object so now we don't need to write anything here in the reducers let's comment this one now in the extra reducer we have to add the cases cases means like like promises has three state right so all those three states now we can handle in the extra reducer it's really handy because in api call we have to handle all the state on the screen what to display when error will be there what to say when a screen is loading right so states we have to handle so I will come to this in a moment but first let's use create async thunk middleware okay so for that you just need to import it create async thunk and now here what you need to do let keep it as of now I will show you here so we'll create one function here 
export const let's keep the same name get products and here you need to use create async thunk which will take first parameter as the action type so we can say here products or get and here its second argument will be a callback function so it's an async callback function we have to write something like this okay and now whatever logic you have written here let's copy this one and put it here let's comment this one so this will remain same you will have an api call and you will get the json data now you don't need to dispatch any action because we don't have anything in the reducer so you will not dispatch anything just you have to return the data so now in this extra reducer we have to read the data we have to do our state update logic so what we have to do for that we just have to say builder and add case so we can do something like this add case and here on this get products we have to say get products here it will return states you can see here we have fulfilled rejected pending right so as of now let's talk the success scenario so suppose my promise is resolved so once my promise is resolved how you want to update the state that you can do here you don't need to handle it manually or explicitly because it is now in the form of extra reducer here you can do the same thing so now how you want to update the state when my promise is resolved so the same thing that i did here now i have to do it here save the changes and let's test so you can see i'm getting still the same data right i have and here you can see so it automatically create a action you can say i have created products dot get action here right but automatically it check the state whether it is a pending state fulfilled state or rejected state right so for pending i haven't handled it but it's triggered right so if you want to handle something during this stage i want to show the loader or something then you can uh, work on the pending action so here you can create the pending state and you can do that okay so it's really useful because the syntax is very closer to promise so it's very easy to understand it as well so now let's handle the error code of the promises right as i told you we have different states so let's see how we can handle that so to handle the status i need to have one more state here and this will be any state initially i will be have idle nothing right because when i will not hit any api idly it will be in the idle state so i can do something like this fine now on basis of this instead of state we have to say status okay so now let's uh, handle the other state as well the way we have fulfilled what you can do you can add one more case and the same thing here you can say get products dot pending and how you want to handle the pending action here of course i will not do any state update because it's a uh, time it's a time when my uh, api call is in progress you can say so here you usually uh, display loading option right so what i'll do in that case i will update my status value to loading
and now the next thing is the last is the rejected or error state so if my status is error in that case you can display some error message like something went wrong or something like that okay so here you can return something went wrong try again later for trigger this one I have to do some mistake right so let's change this URL to something that is not valid save the changes so when you refresh it will show loading and after that it get into the rejected state so for rejected action you can see my status is also error so for that I have this error this one in the product you can display your alert also here if I import alert you can say import alert from react bootstrap you can display some error message in a good formatting something like this and let's have its key as danger and we have to apply variant also okay let's have a variant also here hmm now test it again so you can see something went wrong please try again later so this is my error scenario so now let's fix it and uh, undo my this url let's make it correct so now it should load ending in fulfilled state and you get the data and everything is working fine right so this is how you can handle the asynchronous operation in redux toolkit with the help of create async thunk and you can see here uh, in the store I haven't configured anything for the middleware because by default thunk middleware comes by default with the configuration of redux toolkit so you don't need to do any kind of configuration to use that you just need to use directly so just one improvement you can do here you can see here this status I'm using a lot I'm using it here also and wherever I'm using it in the component there also I'm using it and there's a huge possibility like by mistake if I do some typo here right so if it will never match with the status and it will not work see no loading so instead of putting it as a string we should use some constant here instead or some enums so that the chances of errors are minimum over there right enums we don't have here directly but we can get a object and we can get a similar kind of structure there so let's quickly fix that so that we will not have any chance of error right so what you can do you can create one utils folder here and here you can create a file with the name of status code.js okay and here let's create that status code and here let's create your enum kind of structure with the help of object so I'll put key and value so loading so here it will act like my constant and its corresponding value so I have loading status I have idle status and at the end I have error status so it's a one-time configuration there would be no chance of any error in this case because I'm gonna use the key instead of value so it would always pick like this so now let's import first let's use it in the product.js so let's import the uh, this status code here and let's see this one so instead of putting it as a string you can say here status code dot you get all these things so there is no chance of any error so if it's a loading then display this one and same thing we will do for error so you can see nothing will break right it's fine and quickly we can do the same change here in the slice as well so let's import and initially it's idle so here you can say status code dot idle and status code dot loading status code idle and status code error you can see it's very clean right so just make a practice of using it like this 
you will get it from a lot of issues that might come in future because as of now I am using this in, in only two files but when project grow I have to use this status in multiple places and now as I have put the status in a separate file so for all asynchronous call the status will remain same these three states we have to handle so we can reuse this file anywhere so it will remain same save the changes and quickly test is everything working fine so initially you can see I have empty card and in the product I have list of product that's why I'm able to see it on the screen and the status is ideal loading was there but it was now done and once you click on add to cart it will add the product into the cart so my cart state will also update so three products I have added and respective action created are dispatched and my bag is also updated when you click on this one it will display all the items that I have added in the cart you can remove any item from the cart as well so it will update this state as well so this is all about the fundamentals of redux toolkit which is important and mandatory to learn if you are using redux toolkit once you understood it it's easy to implement it in any project and doesn't matter how complex project you have so i hope you found this session useful if yes then let me know in the comment section if you have also practiced it along with me and how much you understood about redux toolkit this is all for today. Thank you so much for watching.